Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna rip through Twitter, like we normally do, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions as we go, generally related to three different topics, wealth building, finance, and or commodities. Uh, that's where the value is right now, in uh, commodities, and that's why I focus uh, on them. So let's dive in here, let's see what's going on, and I'll give you my opinions. Uh, if you want to follow me at Finance Score Finance, and if you want to join our community, finding-value.com, I do a lot of training sessions on all the stuff that we talk about, uh, entry points for individual companies that you can see what that I'm taking myself. And if you'd like to follow them, that's up to you. But um, that's that's what you get. And we do have a coupon code going on uh, called LEAP, L-E-A-P. Uh, description link below for the discounts. So investment wisdom, some quotes here. You must have the discipline and the temperament to resist your impulses. Human beings have precisely the wrong instincts when it comes to the markets. Uh, that deals with chasing FOMO and not being interested uh, in the market or the security when it's down and nobody else wants it. Very, very hard to change those instincts. Uh, and I can help you do that. I can show you how to do that. Uh, it's crucial to be able to resist your human nature. And what a lot of people do, and what I did when I was uh, an early investor, some of the mistakes I made was I was trying to trade in and out of companies. I was using the price to dictate my emotional state. Uh, and I was just a new investor back in the beginning commodity bull market, the 2000s bull market, my first one. Now I'm much more of a long-term investor. I handle my emotions much better, uh, very calm, and I use patterns and technical analysis to um, aid me in my entry points, what I'll say. Gary says, so this... This is Gary. He says, this is a problem with simply printing money and try to prop up the system. Without a doubt, the Fed understands the risk they have created by allowing the stock market to soar insanely far above the long-term mean. This creates the potential for a crash. They don't want to crash in an election year, so they will actively intervene in markets to try and prevent that from happening. That's clearly what has occurred today. However, the liquidity they are injecting into stocks is immediately leaking into the commodity markets, causing gold and energy to surge higher. There is no free lunch in this world. Even if you have a printing press, ultimately, what they are going to end up with is, is out-of-control inflation. The second wave of the inflation cycle is starting to heat up. This will damage and destroy economies and intensify the war cycle in his opinion. I would agree with that. Uh, I've got gold and silver today. There's me. <laughs> Peter says, don't look now, but oil is up 5% in a week, 11% in a month. And now gamma effects are coming into play as key strike levels are breached. The market will be tight in eight weeks with or without further geopolitical disruptions. The SPR has unintended consequences <clears throat> about to bite on the way up. So all that SPR release did was give us a temporary relief for a period of time. And here we are again, eating through inventories and going to send oil to the upside. It's going to be a fun ride if you're part of the oil crew and energy service crew. Here's Cuppy. He says, this is from almost exactly a year ago. Investing is easy because everything in the world is pretty obvious. It's the timing that's hard. If you can be patient on timing and all the other BS along the way, you're going to have some pretty amazing returns. I agree with that. He said a year ago, global central banks are going to swap U.S. treasuries for gold, and they are then going to self-custody that gold which will blow up all sorts of banks that rehypothecate and relend phantom gold. 
when gold breaks two thousand dollars, TLT will break a hundred, and then the race is on to get size done the fastest. So basically, what he's saying is when interest rates go up and gold go up together, these banks are scrambling to basically fix their rehypothecation and relending phantom gold, which is going to be a lot more demand for gold. So that's the setup. It's going to be insane here, I think, going forward. Uh, a lot of fun if you're participating on the long side of this. Uh, Gergen says, this is 2024. U.S. days of supply of natural gas is 17% higher year over year. So we can see that even though we have a, a glut or warmer weather that hasn't taken away that inventory. We're not at a horrible location compared to the other years, but we are still on the high side for U.S. days of supply of natural gas. Another, some other quotes here. It says, fundamental value investing will always be relevant. To succeed, always buy for less than what it is worth and be smarter than the market. It will never go out of style, says Charlie Munger. Value investing remains the best course, says Julian Robertson. And I agree, value investing is exactly what I've adopted uh, in my strategy. And I use ratios to identify that value. Um, learning what I've learned, if I could go back into my early 20s and deploy exactly what I've learned, I would be completely different in terms of how much wealth I have. I would have purchased things a little bit differently. I would have purchased even earlier a house, um, obviously refinanced like I did in 2021, but that will completely change your life. Your, your house is generally, or I would say the majority of people, their most expensive purchase. And if you can buy it at, the, at a good time, <clears throat> at a good price, and then refinance it at, a, at a, also another good time, uh, your payments will look dramatically different than someone who doesn't time it, uh, to some degree at least. Here's some more investment wisdom. He says, do not take yearly results too seriously. Instead, focus on four or five-year averages, says Warren Buffett. You can have a down year, but that doesn't matter. You might still own the right stocks. The stock price is separate than the business. And when you do value investing, you're buying the, the business itself, the value of the business and the cash flow that the businesses have. And the stock price may not be directly related to the business. And that's how the value is created. When that value is created, you as an investor have to have the knowledge and the strength to hold and buy something that basically is out of favor. And that and what you're doing is you're 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 exploiting that value that's created by the market. So the reason he says do not take yearly results too seriously is because you don't know when the business will be revalued with the stock price. So the the stock price follows the value of the business uh, over long periods of time, but you can get disconnected in the short term. That is exactly what we are doing is we're taking advantage of that short-term disconnection. Since it's disconnected, you have to buy when no one else wants it. You have to buy when people are fearful because that is what is causing the disconnect. That is what's giving us that value uh, opportunity to begin with. If you can't buy it when people are selling it, you'll never get the value disconnect as much as maybe other people do who can. Warren Pye says, new cycle highs in residential construction payrolls. No signs of a housing construction slowdown equals no recession in foreseeable future, in his opinion. And I agree with that. Uh, that is what I've seen in history. Uh, that is exactly what is driving it. It's housing construction. That is what it is. Investment wisdom, Warren Buffett always put, puts it best. We prefer a lumpy 15% return to a smooth 12% return. Investors would rather have the reverse. 
should ask themselves whether their aversion to volatility is mostly financial or mostly emotional. It's mostly emotional. Because on a financial basis, you, you'd much rather have a lumpy, higher return. Now, my returns, at least for the past five to 10 years, have been much higher than 15%. Maybe I'm lucky to some degree. Maybe I'm a, a good stock picker. I don't know. But I've done very well. Even specifically since 2020, I've done incredibly well. Uh, drill, baby, drill. Uh, I knew we were adding international rigs. Uh, neighbors of top provider with these other drillers here. So this is international oil rigs, X North America. We are plus 12 month over month to 741 in March. Baker Hughes. So Saudi Arabia, India, and Indonesia are up four. Nigeria, uh, Brazil up three. Norway, Gavin, Mexico up two. We are down two in Egypt, down three in Qatar, Argentina, and down four in Ecuador. But that's where we're at right now. You can see that the trend has been lower. Uh, I do think that this will eventually work its way on up, and it's probably going to be quite nasty uh, with the oil price moving on up. Now, a lot of people think that drilling more will equate to more and more production. I'm in the camp that the resource ultimately determines the production flow. If we are short on the resource, you can drill more and the productivity will go down. You may be able to, for a short period of time, increase production by drilling a lot more, but I think eventually it will, it will decline. So that, that's kind of where I'm interested the most is, is oil going to peak in production soon? If it does, there's gonna be some nasty ramifications for everything in the system. <laughs> that includes oil price and the value of stocks <clears throat> and I would say uh, currencies and bond markets. So let's get let's keep going. We got silver here on a monthly view. It's right at resistance, good resistance too. Uh, time frame is important. If the breakout is the next candle or the one after, we're weeks away, maybe months. Everything prior is just noise. And we've got a nice little resistance line going across here that we are breaking to the upside on the monthly silver chart. So if we can close April out strong, we have a monthly closing. And things are going to look uh, very different, I think, looking backwards uh, a year from now, which means silver is probably going to have a huge break here. Uh, and we could run, we could run even, I don't know if we'll do it right off the bat. We might pause at $50 an ounce, uh, but we could, we could go multi-hundred eventually. It's possible. Here's Grady. I like reading his stuff. He's always um, got some good charts too. Gold has broke out above the gray box. It means the secular bull market is now resuming. A true lifetime opportunity and a threat. Don't get prepared in every, it says do get prepared in every way. Many miners will absolutely do 20 to 50X. Choose the right ones. So it begins. So gold 53 year chart, the three gold bull moves. We've got one, two, and then we're starting the big third one. Uh, the first one was after Nixon ended the gold standard by 1971. I was done by the people behind Nixon to be more correct. Uh, the largest three drives up move I've ever seen, in his opinion. The third bull move, which will kill the present global monetary system, is going to occur right here. And we're breaking out of that gray box. This will kill the system. You're either in it or you're not to some degree here. And I think that's how he views it as well. Michael says, who would have thought that France switching to nuclear power was the fastest and most efficient way to fight climate change? German ideological decision to close its nuclear power plants is the dumbest environmental, geopolitical, and economical decision since World War II. So changes in per capita CO2 emissions and GDP, France, boom, 
ripping it for GDP per capita, and their CO2 per capita is declining for French, the French. Smartest move to make, guys. Go nuclear. <clears throat> We've got gold and silver miners are waking up, smelling a possible bottom in the U.S. initial jobless claims. Still a long way to go. Uh, here's gold and silver mining companies. They generally follow, follow the U.S. initial jobless claim. Now, we're still low in this jobless claim, and this might break apart. It might. And the reason I say it might break apart is because gold and silver would always move with rates going down. And when rates would go down, that's when jobless claims would go up, almost always. They would pause uh, the rates here when it goes sideways, when we're just slowly declining here. And then they would, they would do a decline of interest rates when this jobless claims goes up. Here's the thing. This correlation, I think, has broken. And the reason I think the correlation is broken is because we're seeing yields go up along with gold and silver. And I think we could see gold and silver mining companies go up <clears throat> with gold and silver. And the reason the break is, is because people are starting to worry about the bond market and currencies. And that's your end of game uh, movement. That's what he's talking about up here with this big third leg. And, and what Cuppy was talking about earlier too, when yields go up, people are being, they're, they're selling bonds and they're going and preferring to buy uh, physical metals. That's gonna be AKA the third bull move, which will kill the present global monetary system. So this correlation is breaking for the US initial jobless claims in my opinion. And we are going into the third bull move, which will kill the global monetary system. And you're gonna see interest rates Oil and gold go up together, I think. And you could even see copper, too, move all in, tam in sync. <clears throat> Warren Buffett sees a bright future for fossil fuels, as do I. Not stating that I have any relationship with Warren Buffett, but I, I agree with this statement, very much so. Uh, here's J.C. Parrott's. I love his charts here, all of his uh, ratio charts. Are you going to tell me that this is a downtrend? Commodities are king this cycle, not stocks, and certainly not bonds. So this is commodity versus bonds. You can see we're ripping to the upside here. Um, the way that I view this is we've got a three hump consolidation, one hump, the second hump, and then the third, and then you draw a trend line through here. That is the consolidation period in a recovery phase of real estate. This here is where we entered the expansion phase from 2020 onward. That's when all of the wrongfully so housing uh, bubble people started to come out talking about affordability. <clears throat> when the housing market gets the tightest and, and when we're at the beginning of an expansionary phase, the affordability is the worst. Um, they need to go back and look at history and study real estate cycles more in depth. Uh, or if they can't figure it out that way, they need to add some IQ points. But we are moving on up. It looks fantastic. We have entered an expansionary phase of real estate where commodities are favored over other asset classes. We also saw in 2021, 21 or 22, we saw that stocks and bonds both pulled back together under an increasing interest rate environment. I think it was 21. That also occurred at the beginning of commodity bull markets the last two cycles. So we're in a very similar situation uh, and leading indicators are also showing the, that stocks and bonds moving down together at the same time uh, signifies that the commodity bull market has basically kicked off, which is great. And now we're entering, I think, wave three, potentially. Um, here's silver, and I just can't get enough silver um, when looking at these charts. I'm talking about silver charts. It says that, that is a hugely bullish chart, historical point in time. We have a breakout here. So what he says is, this is the mother of all legit looking, probable cup and handles. It says, first... It had a picture-perfect quantuple, quantuple support backtest to pink handle arc. 
Black line, gray line, blue line, plus fib, 61.8%. That is stylish. Then it formed a huge bullish blue expanding falling wedge as backtest pattern. And now we have a breakout. Now, here's the thing that I'll talk about here. The bigger the pattern, the bigger in space, right? But that's not it. It also takes time, time to play out. Since it's such a large pattern, <clears throat> the cup and the handle, take, the handle took time to basically scribe itself out. I think the handle is getting done scribing itself out. And all of that pent up energy in this pattern here is going to get released soon over the next year or two. That is where you make all your money. That is your generational wealth that's going to be created. It's in the pattern and the way the herd is moving uh, with each other. It's coming, boys. It's coming. It says, gee whiz, gold is pretty high. Here's a thread on gold. It says, gold has been called a lot of things, like an inflation hedge. It is imperfect inflation hedge at best. It's been called a store of value, a disaster hedge. It's been called all sorts of things. What it is, reality, is a protection against debt monetization. What is debt monetization? Debt monetization is when a government runs out of control deficits, interest rates skyrocket, and the central bank is asked to cap interest rates in response. Rates are capped by the central bank being willing to buy all available bonds at a given price. With printed money, of course, <clears throat> the, the money supply explodes, inflation skyrockets, and investors flock to hard assets like gold, but also pretty much all commodities. There is plenty of historical precedent for this. This is exactly what happened in the hyperinflationary episodes in Weimar, Germany, Zimbabwe, Argentina is fighting it as we speak. Not to say that we'll get a million percent inflation here, but even 9% inflation was pretty painful. A government bond is a claim. It is a claim on some asset. And that asset is the productive abilities of all the citizens in the country. When the supply of claims exceed the supply of assets, the result is inflation. This is the main reason gold is rallying right now. Interest expense is spiraling out of control, and if interest rates tick up 1% or 2% higher, we'll be in fiscal checkmate. The only path forward will be debt monetization. So anything that increases the probability that we will monetize makes gold go up, and anything that decreases the probability that we will monetize makes gold go down. We're probably noticed... You've probably noticed that rates in gold are now positively correlated. Why? Because when interest rates go higher, it actually increases the probability of monetization. In a normal environment, high rates are bad for gold because gold yields, yields nothing in comparison. Now high rates are actually good for gold. Few understand this. Gold responds to a number of different economic variables. But the one that is the highest correlation to is budget deficits. When deficits are large, like 2009 to 2011, gold goes up. When deficits are small, like 2011 to 2016, gold goes down. The one thing we know about 2024 election is that no matter who gets elected, the deficit will likely to get even larger. Outside of some big disinflationary impulse, we are likely to get much higher rates. And if we get a war, Katie Barr for the door. There is historical precedent for that too. The Fed pegged the yield curve during World War II, and after it lifted the peg, inflation went to high double digits. Gold was not freely floating at the time. I've always thought that debt monetization was possible since we started QE in 2008, and it's worth talking about QE. How is QE different from monetization? With QE, you set aside a finite amount of money to buy bonds. With monetization, you set aside an infinite amount. We've been inching closer for this for the last 16 years. Things always take longer than you think in finance, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're doing a full-blown monetization in 2024 through 2028. That is the end game. And that's where I'm going to end it, guys. Um, so 
you like the content, give me a thumb up, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the website if you'd like. Uh, we have a question and answer session coming up on Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, I'll see you guys there. It's Mountain Time. We still have that discount coupon code LEAP going on. If you'd like to join and try it out, uh, you can get 50% off the first month uh, when you sign up. Then it goes to regular pricing. Uh, or you can sign up, even if you're a monthly member, to the yearly membership and get a bigger discount. All right, guys. Uh, we'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.